Hi, welcome back to Island Time Art Design. Today I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I haven't worked with these three colors before, purple, red, and yellow. And so I'm going to try those colors. And I'm also going to try putting uh, like a band at the top and thinking I'm going to do three flip cups coming down from that band. Um, just to see what, what's going to happen with uh, using some oil with the flip cups. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and see what happens. So I've already mixed up my paint and I mix them up in these um, these graduated bottles with the Floetrol and I don't mix them with oil if I can help it. Um, sometimes I use these bottles to catch recycled paint but if I can help it I try to keep the oil out of the bottles because sometimes I don't want to use oil in the paintings. So these have been mixed up already. I, what I do is I use these little three ounce cups and I, I, I I pour the I pour the paint the flow troll in the bottom sh bottle shake it up pour it in the little cup that way when I do my um, thickness test it's easier for me to see how thick it is if I let it run off of the little spatula or wood stick into the little cup and then I pour it back into the bottles so these have already been mixed up and they're ready to go I'm gonna put a link to these bottles in the um, comments below if you would like to purchase these they're uh, they're, they're nice to use when you're going to do these little tiny cups and you're going to be filling them with different layers of paint so that way you, you're not trying to pour with a stir stick sticking out and you get the paint exactly where you want it because it's got the the tip oops because it's got the tip on the end so you can add, add it to just the corner of the cup if you want you could add it to the center depending on what you're wanting to have for the effect um, because I'm going to be using oil, I'm going to be filling these cups up uh, with layers and then I'm going to have oil in the closer to the bottom of the cup, maybe at the, the three-quarter mark. I should say closer to the top of the cup at the three-quarter mark, but when I flip it over, that becomes the bottom and then that way the oil is going to come up through those layers of paint and that produces the cells that I'm looking for. So for now I'm going to start with a purple band at the top, which I'm going to put here because um, it's, it's already oriented, orientated there. The reason I'm covering the edges is because I'm not going to be tilting my flip cups onto this edge. I'm finishing off this edge right now because it's probably going to start drying while I do the other sides. And I just run my hand along the bottom edge to get it to stop pulling the paint. And for this painting, I don't necessarily want a straight line at the top. So I can pull it down a little bit, just, just so that paint's not too thick. So what I was saying is, is I don't want, it, it's a very, it, right now there's a very thick edge of purple here, and I don't want that purple to be so thick that it cracks. So I either need to tilt it onto the painting or I need to tilt it off of the canvas on the, on the edge. And since this is going to be one of the colors in my flip cup, I might as well have it onto the front of the painting. Right now to me it looks like it might be a little bit thicker, but we'll see once, it, once I start layering the paints if, it's, if the purple is going to be too thick. Um, okay, so I'm going to start filling up my three, my three flip cups and I'm going to alternate the layers and I'm, they're not going to be all the same. I think with one side I'll go ahead and use more of the white colors like the yellow and the, um, the red. I'm trying to lay the colors in layers instead of dropping them through. So 
So that's why I'm kind of squirting it on like you would your condiments or ketchup or mustard and um, have them have them uh, back and forth in layers instead of if you if I were to squeeze it straight down the middle it's it's going to create a pool and open up through but I want I want the layers to be in the cup. So I think this first cup is going to be almost an orange maybe some red and yellow peeking through but it's going to be kind of an orange where the other two is just going to be the um, the all three colors and I'll probably just have the one layer of yellow in these two and since I'm kind of halfway I'm going to add just a maybe a drop or two of the oil this is silicone oil I'm going to try to squeeze just as little as much as I can put three drops in there just a couple drops here I just try to make them a little bit different from each other all right so this has two drops three drops three drops and I'm going to continue with the layers and I am covering up all of that oil with the next layer of paint so it doesn't flow upward I want to bury that oil okay so these two have more oil and they have more colors um, I'm going to do one more layer of red here and then I'm going to add more oil to these two that has a big drop right there okay that has a lot of oil and that I'm just going to do one because that was a big drop of oil also Okay, and then I'm going to do another layer on top. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Now the yellow next to the purple is probably going to create a brown color. That's all right. Sometimes it comes out really pretty. I just want to make sure I have enough yellow for that first cup because it's just red and yellow. So my canvas is 12 by 12 and my cups are 3, 3, and 3. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and flip, flip each cup over and because I already have paint on the canvas I'm going to just try to flip them quickly just with my hand instead of lifting the canvas with the cup. Here we go. And if I, if I drop it right about, right about here in the center between the purple and the bottom I think I'm gonna have plenty of paint to cover both directions that was that was easy maybe I'll st stagger them a little bit too I know the suspense is killing you isn't it okay here it goes all right now um, I had just a little bit of oil in this cup and more oil in these two cups so what's happening in, inside the cup is the paint is falling down to the canvas and I'm gonna let it fall and I'm gonna let it sit up for just a little bit while it's in the cup and that oil is heading upwards through the paint layers so when I lift these up there's gonna be pockets of, of oil and maybe even some air pockets from mixing up the colors in the bottles I put some air in there aerates it a little bit and I'm going to let those those cells come up before I tilt and before I torch. So which cup should I do first? I think I'll go with the, this one here. I'm going to tilt it down and towards me. So that's pretty. Cover these edges down here. Got lots of beautiful cells coming up on their own without using a torch. I, I, I'm going to have plenty of paint for this project. Okay, this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go towards me. Go 
Lots of red. I'm not always successful with the red. A lot of times it dries really dark. I haven't quite figured that out. If you know why the reds are drying dark, please leave me a comment below and tell me the, the kind of paint you use and maybe what your mix is. So that's a really bright red in the cup when it's wet. Okay, so I'm going to move this one up and do the same thing. Now this is the yellow one. Tilt, drag. So we got all these beautiful cells coming up on their own. I got target cells here. I've got this worm segmented type thing over here. Beautiful. And then I just let them set up. To, get, to, to, to make bigger cells, you have to let the paint work on its own for a while. And then when you tilt, it'll open them up even bigger. At least that's what I found to work well for me. So I'm going to tilt that direction so that I have a nice clean edge with the purple and, and there won't be any canvas left behind. First, first I'm going to show you what the cells look like up close without touching the camera, hopefully. So there's the yellow and red cup. There's the center cup. And then there's the other cup. There's a lot of target cells right there. Are lots of target cells coming up through that last cup. Okay, so we're going to tilt. I'm trying to close in on that white area right in the center. And I was able to close that up. I'm going to get that area on the, the white area on the edge. Okay, so I was able to close up that white area here and the white area on the edge. And now I'm going to go for this white area along this side and then I'm going to finish the bottom edge. There is just a little bit here. Since the weight of the paint is shifted to the right, I'm going to go ahead and pick up that spot before I do the other tilts. It's just a little stubborn spot there. Now I'm going to tilt back towards the orangey color area. Touching up the corner so that the fluidity of the paint is just assisting that to flow. Okay. And now, when everything's all covered, that's when I look at my composition and I, oh, I have one more edge to cover. And then I'm going to position the composition where I want it. I think I would like a little bit more of that purple, so I'm going to tilt it back downward. I guess the purple is going to be my negative space. And as I continue to tilt, more and more cells are opening up. I 
This painting's starting to look like maybe it's a lava flow inside of a volcano. Sometimes it's hard to know when the painting is done. You just have to decide what you're, what you want to see, what you want to keep, what you want to roll off the edges and let, let go of some things. It's all beautiful, but some of it you have to let go of. Yeah, I think that's going to be it right there. So when I'm done getting the composition the way I want it, I run my hand along the bottom edge so that it stops running. And that also gives me time to look at my edges to make sure that they're all covered. There's no white canvas showing through. Okay, so I'm going to get my torch, get the air bubbles off the top, There is a little baby alligator in this one. Maybe uh, if you see him, if you see him in the painting, maybe you want to leave a comment without telling everybody else where he is. Just to say that, yep, I see him. He's in there. I'm going to show you a close-up of this painting. There. So there's the, there's the orangey side. And all the detail from the different layers of paint with the oil. So this painting is going to be complete after it dries for about a week. I'll take a photo of what that looks like when it's dry and I'll put it at the end of this video. Okay, and here is our final painting after it's been dry for about four days, five days. We've got some very nice bright color oranges coming out here, orange, yellow, reds. And then we've got the, the interesting look of these cells in the middle. You can see those cells in the middle there. And then the other cup, the third cup, had also some interesting cells, but they're quite a bit darker. And I do like these down here. I'm going to show you really up close there. So those got very, very interesting in the middle. So I like how this turned out. I like the dark purple in the negative space of the painting. And I probably would have liked maybe more of a third of the painting be the purple, the negative space. But I do like the composition, how this one turned out. You'll notice that there's a glare in certain areas. That's where the oil pooled on the top of the painting. And that's easy to take take care of later. Um, that will be part of a video I do on how to finish a painting. Um, we'll be removing the, the oil and then doing a varnish on top. But to do a, a basic pour painting with some flip cups and some negative space, I think it worked out really, really well. And I'm happy with how this one turned out. If you learned anything in this video, please give me a thumbs up below. And also there'll be a link right about here where you can subscribe to watch more of my the YouTube channel and thanks for coming today. I appreciate it. If you'd like to see how I made this painting, click this link. <laughs>